Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Shakayla and I am so excited that you're here. I've been plant-based for eight years now and I really enjoy sharing what I've learned over the years with you all. So in this video, I wanted to go through some of my plant-based essentials or a grocery list for you, whether you are new to the plant-based diet, whether you just want to incorporate more plant-based meals or you've been doing this for a while and you just wanna know what I have in my kitchen. I wanna go through things that you should think about adding to your kitchen. Imagine this, we're walking through the grocery store together. Here's what I would pick up first. We just walk to the produce section. I always, always have fruit on hand for just like a healthy snack. Whenever I want something sweet, if it's not dessert, I'm definitely grabbing fruit. Also think about what's in season, but fruit is a must for me on my grocery list. Next on the grocery list would be leafy greens. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you know dino kale is my absolute favorite, but I always will have kale or spinach, like a leafy green on hand. Another item from the produce section that I will always buy, mushrooms. They are just so easy to cook with. These are baby bella mushrooms. I also have some king trumpet mushrooms because I want to do like pulled mushrooms or mushroom bacon. Mushrooms are a really good meat replacement sometimes. I like to use it in my mushroom and walnut meat, which is delicious. Add it to a pasta, edgy bowl, the list goes on. I always have mushrooms on hand. This is also produce, but these are also flavor enhancers to any meal. I start the majority of my meals off with these items. So I have an onion right here. We have garlic as well as a red bell pepper and shallot. I think they are key ingredients to a lot of recipes that I share, to a lot of recipes that are online. So if you are starting off your plant-based journey and you wanna fill your kitchen with some of those staples, definitely make sure that you have onions, garlic, bell peppers, whether it be green bell peppers or red bell peppers and shallots on hand. Also sweet potatoes. I like to have these sweet potatoes because they are considered a complex carb. They're filling, you can have these for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, whatever i always have sweet potatoes on hand if you see my videos you know i'm a sprout girl so these are actually broccoli sprouts there are so many different types of sprouts out there but sprouts they're a powerhouse of nutrition and so i always keep sprouts on hand i like to throw these on sandwiches on salads and veggie like roasted veggie bowls the list goes on i just like to keep the house stocked with fresh produce because as i mentioned in a previous video i recently shifted away from taking a multivitamin mainly because i realized with the amount of produce that i was cooking with and enjoying even in its raw form oftentimes i was getting double to triple the amount of vitamins that i actually needed because i was taking a multivitamin so now i just look to incorporate more fresh produce in my diet and use supplemental vitamins where needed. And you're probably wondering, how am I gonna remember this when I go to the grocery store? Don't worry. I created a printable grocery list and I linked it in the description box. You just go click the link, download it, save it to your phone or print it and just take it with you in your next grocery store run. All right, moving on to the frozen section. I like to keep frozen fruit and then also frozen veggies. They are loaded with fiber and vitamins, but you can throw these in smoothies and your oatmeal. You can even melt them down, kind of combine them with a bit of sweetener and make a syrup to put on top of pancakes. But I always have some sort of frozen vegetable or frozen fruit on hand. Now also in the produce section at most grocery stores, they typically have the plant-based proteins included over there, at least at the grocery stores that I've been to. So now I wanted to talk about some of my must-have plant-based protein slash meat alternatives. I like to keep plant-based deli slices on hand. I recently came across this brand, Plant Provision. I've been on a journey to identify brands and products that are out there that have pretty simple, minimal ingredients and that are pretty quote unquote clean, I guess. And this is one of the brands that I discovered. These are plant-based deli slices made from red peppers and chickpeas. I'll actually have this linked in the description box if you wanna check out the full list. But in one serving of this, you get seven grams of protein. I actually ordered these online because I couldn't find them near me. That's how much I enjoy it. And I love enjoying these with dairy-free cheese and crackers to make a little snack plate. Also, tofu in any form. There are so many 
many different types of tofu out there and tofu is loaded with protein as well. You have fava bean tofu, chickpea tofu, pumpkin seed tofu, soy based tofu. So I try to have protein with every meal. And the reason why I love tofu is that you can have it for breakfast as a tofu scramble. You can have it for lunch as crispy tofu. And tofu typically has a good amount of calcium in it plus protein as well. Another source of protein that I love incorporating into my meals is either textured vegetable protein, which is a soy based protein or pea protein crumbles. They both pretty much look like this. They are very fine and dehydrated. So you have to rehydrate them, but pea protein crumbles or textured vegetable protein crumbles, you'll just rehydrate them with warm water. You can use the pea protein crumbles or textured vegetable protein in tacos and pasta and stuff, bell peppers, the list goes on. And from what I can remember in one cup of pea protein crumbles, it's about 45 grams of protein and one cup of textured vegetable protein, it's about 35 grams of protein. And that is in its dehydrated state. So when you do rehydrate it, it pretty much doubles in size. So I never really <laughs> use that much. However, I just wanted to share that because it does have quite a bit of protein. And then another meat alternative, which I briefly discussed earlier in the produce section is mushrooms. Mushrooms do have protein, but it's not a significant amount. However, mushrooms are a really good meat replacement. For example, this is a king oyster mushroom, which you can actually shred to do maybe like a pulled mushroom sandwich, where you can slice, thinly slice and do mushroom bacon. The list goes on, but mushrooms are a really good meat alternative as well. Again, it doesn't have a significant amount of protein. It does have some, but not a significant amount. But if you are just looking for something to replace that meaty texture in certain meals, mushrooms are a way to go. So now we're gonna walk through the baking aisle. I don't really bake a ton. However, these are items that can be found on the baking aisle that you can incorporate in your meals. I always have one of these on hand. This is cornstarch. This is arrowroot flour. One, they act as a thickener if you want to make a sauce, like a, a stir fry sauce of some sort, but these work really well to make food crispy. So if you have mushrooms, tofu, if you marinate it and then season it up and toss it in one of these, put it in the air fryer or the oven, you will have the crispiest tofu ever. So I love having one of these on hand, if not both. I also like having nutritional yeast on hand. This is also found I want to say majority of the time in the baking aisle as well. Nutritional yeast is a good source of B vitamins. So this one has vitamin B1, 2, 6, and 12. Most times on a plant-based diet, you have to supplement B12 because most B12 is found in meat-based products. And since I don't consume meat, I either get my B12 via a vitamin or through nutritional yeast. And then I also just like to keep flowers on hand. Something else I like to have on hand that you can find in the baking aisle is cacao powder. Now, I really enjoy cacao powder because it has a good amount of magnesium and magnesium is an essential nutrient that our body needs. It also has iron, protein, and fiber. You can make a like homemade hot chocolate. You can put this in baking if you wanna use it for chocolate, but I enjoy mixing this with a bit of dairy-free milk adding a bit of sweetener to it, or even putting this in a smoothie and making a chocolate-like smoothie. All right, now we're in the pasta and noodles section of the store. One thing I'm gonna have on hand is some pasta. So I enjoy using legume-based pastas because they're typically a bit more nutritious for you, but don't get me wrong. The girl will keep a regular type of pasta on hand. It just depends on what mood I'm in, you know? But for example, this red lentil pasta, it has five grams of fiber per serving and 14 grams of plant-based protein per serving. And I've been loving this chickpea orzo from the brand Barilla. It is so good and it has, one serving has 12 grams of protein eight grams of fiber, you cannot go wrong with that. So I love having items like this on hand because it's a really good way to make meals that you enjoy where you're still getting the nutritional benefits as well. So in my grocery store, we're gonna say that the pasta and baking items are on the same aisle. And also on that aisle are sweeteners. And so these are some of my go-to sweeteners. I enjoy using maple syrup as a sweetener substitute, whether I put this in my matcha or add it to a recipe that calls for some sort of sweetener. I also enjoy 
enjoy using these are dates. Dates are very nutritious and high in fiber. I really enjoy dates. You can also use these as the desserts and it is so good. So something that I do is I'll take this, I'll remove the seed and I'll fill this with peanut butter, dip it in some sort of chocolate, sprinkle a bit of salt on it, put it in the freezer to let it harden. It is the absolute best. It's so delicious. So dates are a really good sweetener. You can make date syrup as well. And then I also use stevia and or coconut sugar as my sweetener alternatives. I've been actively trying to incorporate natural sweeteners into my diet and so that's why we keep these items on hand. Now moving on to grains, beans, and seeds. I enjoy keeping canned goods on hand. I like canned goods. In the event I don't have time to soak and then cook my beans, I like to have these on hand. And these are just two that I randomly pulled out. Now, if I do have a little bit more time in the kitchen, I do have some dried beans. So these are dried red beans. These are dried lentils. I have so many more dried lentils and dried beans in there. But having canned or dried beans are a must have for me because these are also very nutritious, loaded with fiber. And if your body can handle them, I would definitely recommend keeping those on hand. I don't think I mentioned nuts. So I also like to keep nuts on hand. These are great to add to smoothies or even to make a nut milk out of. So these are cashews that I have right here walnuts because I love to make mushroom and walnut meat and then hemp seeds. I love sprinkling these in like a stew to a soup to a sauce or just sprinkling it on top of a meal because these have about I'm going to say 10 grams of protein in three tablespoons but they're also very nutritious filled with omega-3s. Same with walnuts. Make walnut milk. You can soak these and eat them to get your omega-3s for the day. And then cashews. When I have the energy, I really enjoy making cashew milk. So I love to keep cashews on hand. And then last but not least, quinoa. I think it's so delicious and high in fiber and has a decent amount of protein as well. And again, I'm not showing everything that I have in my kitchen. The items I am showing is to give you a general idea of what I like to keep on hand. Again, I do have a printable grocery list in the description box with almost everything that I like to keep on hand. And now we are walking through the dairy alternative alternative section of the store. These are not only some of my favorite brands, but items that I love to keep on hand because I know I can put together, whether it be a quick meal or a little snack. First up is dairy-free milk. If I'm not making the milk myself from whether it be the cashews, the walnuts, or the almonds that I have in the pantry, I'm purchasing it at the grocery store. This is a really good brand that I enjoy. They came out with these organic milks that have three ingredients, water, the nuts that they're using. So this one is organic almonds and then sea salt. So just three ingredients does mean that it kind of perishes a bit faster. So you have to use it up for the week. But I love to have a dairy free milk on hand. Again, if I don't make it, I purchase it at the grocery store. And another one to incorporate would be coconut milk if you can tolerate it. Coconut milk is really good to use in pastas or stews. Also dairy-free cream cheese. This is my go-to brand of dairy-free cream cheese. I just really like this brand in general because of the ingredients of their products. For example, this dairy-free cream cheese is made from cashew milk, sea salt, and coconut cream. I like the brand Follow Your Heart. I love to use their Parmesan in meals or like salad dressing. Things, it is so good. Now as far as yogurts go, I like to use dairy-free yogurt not only as yogurt but as a sour cream substitute. There are good dairy-free sour creams out there like from the brand Forager. They have a magnificent dairy-free sour cream but I do like to buy the yogurt because it can be like a two for one. Again you can use that as yogurt and enjoy it with like some fruit, nuts, or granola but you can also use it as a sour cream substitute. This is a brand that I enjoy using every now and then. This is Coco June. I like it because it is coconut based, so it's a good probiotic. I would say it's a three in one from yogurt, sour cream substitute, and a probiotic. Another thing I like to buy from the dairy section would be a plant-based butter. Miyoko's plant-based butter, I really enjoy it. It cooks, melts, bakes like traditional butter in my opinion. It's not something that I buy every single time I go to the grocery store, but if I have a little room in the budget, 
I'm gonna add it in there because it's great to just use everywhere you would have typically used dairy-based butter. In that dairy section right next to it, you have eggs. I don't eat eggs. So what I typically use as an egg substitute, I showed you the chickpea flour. Again, you can do chickpea omelet or chickpea scramble. I love using tofu as an egg substitute to make like tofu scrambles. Your girl loves a good tofu scramble, okay? Absolutely love it. But another good egg substitute would be mung beans. Mung beans high in fiber. You would just soak these, blend them with a few other ingredients, and these can scramble, bake, and be a really good egg substitute as well. And then when it comes to baking, flax seeds are a really good egg substitute. Take this, mix it with a bit of water, and it'll make a gelatinous type of mixture. You can add it to cornbread, muffins, pancakes. It's a really good substitute as well. Moving on to bread, I often get asked what type of bread I eat because, you know, some bread does have dairy in it. It has eggs in it. So my go-tos are sourdough bread. I love me some sourdough bread. And it's really good for the digestive system as well. I typically, either I get it from the grocery store, I try to get it from like the bakery, or you can pick that up at the farmer's market. But Dave's Killer Bread, I have this in the freezer, that's why it looks like that. I like to freeze my bread because it lasts longer. Dave's Killer Bread is a really good alternative. It has three grams of fiber in one slice, and then it also has three grams of protein. It has omega-3s, whole grains, all the things. So I like to use Dave's Killer Bread. Now this isn't necessarily a section in the grocery store, but I'm gonna call this my flavor enhancer section of this video because it kind of just falls into like a miscellaneous pile almost. Vegetable broth, I love to keep vegetable broth on hand whether I purchase it from the grocery store or I make it using vegetable scraps. That's where you just take some of your leftover scraps from prepping your vegetables, throw them in a bag or a container, you freeze them, and after you have a good amount to make a batch of veggie broth, you just simmer it on the stove in some water with a bit of salt. You can add ginger, turmeric for additional benefits as well. I feel like I use vegetable broth almost every single day. And then also tomato paste in any form. You can get this in a can, one of the little tubes, or you can purchase it like this. Tomato paste is really good because you can make pasta sauce, pizza sauce out of this. You can add it to your stews or soups, whatever your heart desires. I like to have tomato paste on hand because it's so versatile. Another thing I like to have on hand is better than bouillon vegetable base. This is actually the organic reduced sodium one. And I like using this in my mushroom and walnut meat. I add it to soups, stews. This just adds another layer of flavor. Also, coconut aminos. Coconut aminos is a really good soy sauce substitute. I had to go buy another one because I used up the last one. I probably finished that one off like a couple days ago. I'm always using this, like you name it. I probably added it to it, except for like sweets and stuff like that. Like that don't make sense, you know? But liquid smoke. If you ever wanna cook some collard greens and have your house smelling like true collard greens, get you some liquid smoke, add a little bit in there. Mm, mm, mm. Still on the topic of flavor enhancers, these are my seasonings. Now, we would be here all day if I went through every single seasoning and spice and herb that I have in here. So I'll just hit you with the ones that I always use, which would be garlic powder. Love me some garlic powder, add it to just about everything. What else do I always reach for? Red pepper flakes. Can't go wrong there. Ooh, I like to use sage whenever I make my plant-based breakfast sausages. Too good, too good. Another one I enjoy using is turmeric. I use turmeric a lot in my tofu scrambles, but then also when I'm making like a curry type of dish. And speaking of tofu scrambles, please do not mind the plastic on this. <laughs> because this stuff can spill and it will smell. But this is black salt, also known as colonomic. It is used to give dishes an egg-like flavor. Well, that's what I use it for. I'm sure it's used for a number of other type of meals. I don't have a label on this one, but this is onion powder, as you can tell then use almost all of it. Bay leaves, bay leaves good for stews or just letting things simmer. Chili powder, 
I am a taco girly through and through and I also love to make chili and I'm using this on both of them. Smoked paprika. You can guarantee I'm using garlic powder, onion powder, and smoked paprika in a recipe. Fennel. I like to use fennel in my recipes as well but then honestly because I've been learning so much about the digestive system I've learned that fennel is really good for the digestive system so sometimes I'll just grab a few of these and, and just chew them after a meal. So this is just a mix of my tofu scramble seasoning blend. So in here I have my garlic powder, my onion powder, have turmeric, I have, where else is it? What is it? I have turmeric, I have a bit of curry powder, I have that black salt, black pepper. Um, I think I said turmeric already. What else do I put in here? And that might be it, but yeah. So I kind of just made my own seasoning blend, which is also something that you can do with all of these. And then another seasoning that I like to keep on hand is furikake. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I feel like somebody told me I wasn't before, but essentially furikake is dried seaweed and sesame seeds with a bit of salt and just garlic i believe furikake is so good to use in meals that you're creating that may have a sea like inspiration for example whether it be furikake or seaweed in general i like to use those in my vegan lobster rolls which i make from heart to palm i like to use those with my vegan scallops which i make from king trumpet mushrooms i like to use the furikake and the seaweed in like furikake coated tofu is just it's out of this world so i love to have furikake on hand ginger is a must you know you can't go wrong with ginger i always have some sort of cajun seasoning to add to a meal and then dried herbs like dried thyme dried basil dried bay leaves dried parsley and then cumin i don't have a label on here but this one is cumin i use cumin in just about everything and it is a must-have for me now when it comes to like sweets and treats and snacks i'm not really big on sweets and desserts every blue moon i'll have something we do like to keep popsicles on hand so these are from the brand good pop but also outshine is a really really good brand they have some amazing popsicles sometimes we'll take these and add some tahini to it so good so good and then we also like these nature's bakery brownies these are out of this world i actually worked with this brand on the campaign and when i had these i was like oh my these are so good so we like to keep these on hand and then these little things we saw these at whole foods and i was like i have to get them they're like peanut butter and jelly cookies think of like an oatmeal cream pie but with peanut butter and jelly on the inside so so good but whenever we're having a sweet craving these are some of the things we like to go to and then last but not least would be like the supplements section of the store so as far as my supplements go I always have protein powders on hand. This is from the brand Happy Viking. This is from Truvani. Although I try to get most of my protein through like food, having the protein powders on hand really helped me when I'm trying to meet my protein goal. Another thing is I really enjoy taking functional mushrooms and adaptogens. This is not like a must have, but I have found that it's been helpful for me as I just learn more about ingredients and products that are out there that can help you along the way so for example this is i kind of have it scratched out but it's from the brand host defense and then it's a completely different lid because i blended everything together but i had three different mushrooms functional mushrooms consist of like lion's mane mushroom chaga mushroom turkey tail mushroom the list goes on but i just put them all in just this one container but they all have different benefits like i know lion's mane mushroom is really good for um, mental clarity also can help prevent based off what i read can help prevent alzheimer's dementia it's not that something has happened or i've been diagnosed with everything a lot of what i've learned over time and started to incorporate into my journey is just based off of prevention. So it's not like I deal with, you know, brain fog or memory loss or anything like that. But if I learn that lion's mane mushroom can help prevent that or minimize it, 
then I want to incorporate it into my diet. And then ashwagandha is really good for stress relief. And then I also take magnesium, which is really good for you as well. And then last for this section is like my vitamins. So I take a vitamin D3 plus K2. I take a probiotic, well, a symbiotic because it's a pre and probiotic. Also take a B12. I mentioned earlier that you can get B12 from nutritional yeast, but I'm not eating nutritional yeast every single day. So I do like to take this spray B12. And then also this omega supplement. Again, I just use it as a supplement. So like in the event I have a meal that doesn't have any omega-3s in it, I just add this to my tea. I can just add this to my tea or to my smoothie and it's a good way to add the omega-3s to your diet for the day. So at a high level, those are some of my must-have items. I really hope that you found this video helpful. Again, I do have a complete list linked in the description box for you to download, save to your phone, print, whatever is most convenient for you. My goal is that this video will help you stock your kitchen with the essential items that I always use that I believe you should use and that will help you while you're on your journey or even to kickstart your journey. If you are new here, please introduce yourself in the comments. I would love to hear from you. There are so many new faces around here and I'm so excited. If you've been here, you haven't introduced yourself, please do so so that I can say hello. And if you've been here for a while, I really do appreciate you for watching this video and always coming back. Leave me a comment letting me know what you thought about this video. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!